Hello again out there, this is Frank again, making another Sherba Mate related video. Uh, if you noticed, um, this time I called it Sherba Mate with a sort of SH sound on it instead of a Y sound. Down in Argentina and a lot of those regions in South America, the Spanish dialect that they speak, they use the SH sound instead of a Y sound. So, Yerba becomes Sherba and Bombilla which is the drinking straw that's used when you drink mate uh, is called a bombisha. Um, so that's just to get that out of the way real quick. Um, today I'm going to be making, as you could tell from the title, a video that discusses and pretty much instructs you on how to make sherba mate. Now this is definitely not the only way, but I'd say it's probably the, one of the most common ways and I've found it to be the best way for me. Um, now I'm going to be discussing the sherba mate or yerba mate which is the standard more or less standard cut it looks kinda like that it's very uh, sort of a dark green pale green color has some sticks in it and that's normal those sticks and twigs um, that's common in a lot of yerbas. Um, they're not to be picked out. I mean you can if you want to but you're going to be spending a lot of time and effort doing it. They're left in there because they add a lightness of flavor to the mate and they also have a lot of uh, theobromine in them. Theobromine is the uh, chemical found in chocolate. So when you eat a fair amount of chocolate or you eat dark chocolate and you sort of get that nice little uplifting feeling from it uh, that's the theobromine affecting your body and sort of help to, helping to lift your mood. So when you make yerba mate, um, it's best uh, not to, to bother picking out those stems or uh, avoiding them because they're a good thing. They help with the flavor and they help with the theobromine, the uplifting feeling. So leave them in there when you make it. Um, so that's a common Argentinian uh, yerba mate called uh, this one. That one was Kraus yerba mate, but a lot of them look very similar. Um, Kraus is very good. It's an organic mate. I recommend it. Now compared to that, there the, a video I did previously. Is that, you see this bright green one here on my right? Um, that one is called yerba mate. Uh, that's how it's pronounced in Brazil. Are very similar to that and it's from the same plant it's just uh, processed very differently it's basically pulverized into a powder mostly and it still has the stems and stuff in it but it's a very bright green mostly powder substance and it has a different flavor as a result different smell and um, it's more difficult to make especially for newcomers who might be more familiar with uh, sherba mate from Argentina or other regions and the, that one I have there is a brand called Shimango. Again, uh, Erva Mach is from Brazil. And um, they usually make a drink, if you could read that there, Shimarao. Uh, that's what it's called. That's the drink that you make. It's not generally called Yerba Mate or Sherba Mate, Erva Mach. Erva Mach is the, the green stuff, and Shimarao is the drink. And it's prepared a little differently because it's a powder and uh, they have their own way of doing it. Um, so just that's a quick overview of the two different kinds. Um, and there's other kinds that are different still. Um, Guayaki is probably the most common brand you'll find in supermarkets uh, throughout the United States. Um, health food stores especially, some supermarkets uh, will carry it also. This one's the traditional one. It's a small bag for like eight dollars or something like that eight nine dollars it's fairly expensive um, it's organic though and what they the company does with the indigenous tribes down there is, is good work so but it's it's a decent mate but it's not the best one best tasting one out there but if if this is all you could get a hold of go ahead and get some and try it out and then I have a, a canister here with some eco teas here by mache or sherba mate and it's kind of mostly just leaves there's not a lot of stems in there this one's just leaves that's a different kind of cut so 
So there are different types of cuts and different flavors to different kinds. And the kind I'm going to be preparing today is a sample pack that just arrived before I started the video and it's a sample pack of Cruz de Malta. Um, this is probably enough for two, three gourds maybe um, of my size gourd and I'm going to open this up and prepare it and show you how I do that. Cruz de Malta is a pretty popular brand from Argentina. Um, a lot of people swear by it. I've never tried it but I've been wanting to so I ordered this online from yerbamate.us and it came pretty quickly. I was kind of surprised. Oh wow. That has a nice nice smell to it. I like to smell the herb before I actually prepare it because the smell kind of gives usually gives you a a little bit of a an idea of what it's going to taste like when you brew it. Hmm. What does that remind me of? Sort of like a light apple sort of smell to it or something like that. Slightly fruity but not like a citrus fruit. I don't know. Anyway, that's that. Now, now that I've got the package open, I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to go over what you need to make your yerba mate. Or we just usually call it mate for short. And why is it called mate? Because this right here, and this comes in different sizes and shapes and materials, but this is called the mate. It's a cup. And mate, the word mate, is uh, I believe the South American native, or one of the South American native uh, tribes' words for cup. So this is a mate or a cup. So that's one of the elements and I made a previous video about the four elements and I'll go over those real quickly now again the four elements are the yerba, the sherba obviously you need that to make it the cup the water and the bombisha or the filtered straw now, these come in very many uh, different shapes and sizes and uh, types this one's a spring bombisha it's actually triple filtered I talked about it in a previous video I'm going to go ahead and use this one because I was planning to make canarias before, which is a finer cut, mostly leaves um, type of sherba. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and make Cruz de Malta this time instead. So, But I'll go ahead and use this one. Now, before you get started, you want to make sure to have your yerba, which is the leaves and stems, your mate, your cup, your bombisha and your water prepared. Now you need two kinds of water. They're both regular water, you know, if you want filtered water, tap water, artesian water, reverse osmosis water, whatever you want, whatever works best for you. We just make sure it's good, clean, drinkable water. Now, uh, first you need a little bit, and this is more than I probably need, but a little bit of just cool room temperature water, not hot, not cold, just resting water. Uh, and what's left in there, or most of it, I'm going to use to uh, soak the, the yerba once I pour it in, inside the gourd before I add the hot water. Now the hot water is not to be boiling hot. It is to be around, generally they say, between 160 and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the range. Uh, most people will go right in the middle there uh, and say go for 170 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a little too hot for me personally usually. Um, if I go that route I have to let it sit in the gourd for a little bit and sip it really slow because otherwise you might burn your mouth. So if it's like 170 degrees or higher be careful because it's probably too hot uh, for your mouth unless you're used to that. Um, I like to shoot for 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's my hot spot personally. But whatever is most comfortable for you, just make sure you don't boil it. Boiling, I think, is 185 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Um, so if you see little bubbles forming when you're uh, warming your water, that's good. But if it's a full-on boil, it's just too hot. Um, 
So let's get to it. All right, I gotta get ready here. Oh, and your hot water, you wanna make sure to have a thermos like this one or whatever type you want, just any kind of closable um, water vessel. Uh, this one's a pretty large thermos, it's over a liter in capacity. Um, something that'll keep your water hot for you. Or you'll just want to use a tea kettle and you know just keep the kettle by you as you're making your mate. And of course it'll cool down after a few minutes, but you could warm it up again or you could pour it into a coffee mug that's insulated or something if you have one of those instead. Uh, just something to keep your hot water in and keep it hot. So, all right. Now I got my mate, or my gourd, as a lot of people will call it, even though this technically isn't a gourd. This right here is a real gourd. It's a natural gourd grown from a plant, cut, dried, decorated, formed, and, and cured. Uh, newcomers, not recommended to go this route. Newcomers use a wooden gourd, or better yet, a ceramic or glass gourd. That's my recommendation. So get your gourd or your mate, get your sherba, and you'll want to pour it into your gourd. You might see some powder uh, flying up there into the air, some uh, that'll happen. Pour it into your gourd about halfway, between halfway and three quarters full. Sounds like a lot, but if you're drinking alone, it may be a lot, especially if you're a newcomer. So you might want to go about halfway full. It might be a little more challenging to drink because the herb won't sit quite right in the gourd because it's not quite full enough. But I like to fill it about three quarters of the way full. Not quite three quarters, almost. And this one has a lot of stems in it, which I actually kind of like. Let's see. Maybe. Yeah, that's about right. So, what that looks like, just to show you real quickly. Just the herb sitting in there, about three quarters of the way full. And what the heck, just a tiny bit more in there. That'll work. And what you'll want to do is uh, take your dominant hand, I'm right handed, and your non dominant hand, place it over the top like so. You could use a plate or the lid to, you know, a butter. Um, butter bucket or whatever you want that's something flat your hand works just fine unless you have a really small hand and uh, you'll turn it almost completely upside down kind of like that and you'll shake it and you'll hear inside the yerba and the stems sort of moving around in there and you don't want to shake it for like 10 minutes or anything ridiculous like that but shake it for about 30 seconds or so and then slowly bring it back to about a 45 degree angle like so and then gently remove your hand and I think maybe I put too much yerba in there eh, not quite I think it's good this is kind of tricky to do on camera there we go and you kind of see there what that looks like you got a hole on one side and then the, the yerba is kind of sitting on the other side so there's like a wall of, of sherba and then a hole in which you're going to pour the, the dummy water or the cool water and let it seep and then you, down that hole you'll also put your bombisha so that's the next step get your dummy water and uh, let me get this in camera and uh, gently kind of shaky here because I'm nervous doing this on camera and pour it sort of at an angle onto the herb not on top of the herb but on the wall sort of and fill it up 
almost all the way to the top of, of where the the herba yerba stops like so see that okay we're just gonna let that soak in maybe add a little bit more and let that soak in for a while I usually like to hold it at that angle for a little while or you could set it at an angle on the table use your bombisha as a prop oh my own voice the air from my voice kind of made some of that herb fly about now as we're letting that soak I want to talk a little bit about why we're doing the shaking um, now it's, it's kind of, it was kind of hard to do on camera so I didn't get it quite right the way I usually do it but the idea is to kind of get some of those stems the larger pieces onto the the wall which is now on this top side or near the bottom of the gourd so when you turn it upside down and you shake it those larger particles are going to move to the top so when it's upside down it moves to the top but when you turn it right side up the top becomes the bottom so most of the stems are on the bottom down here and the stems will act as, as an additional filter for your bombisha when you're actually drinking from it so looks like most of that water's kind of soaked in there okay so then you take your bombisha and the way this works is you're supposed to take your thumb and plug the end of it where you're going to drink from with your thumb and then you'll take your bombisha and you'll gently just put it right down into that hole that's still there from when you shook up the mate and then just kind of gently push that bombisha see the bombisha is almost straight up and down right now but kind of gently mold it a little bit and push back a little bit and up until you get a good angle good sitting spot for that and there you go that's a pretty decent setup set that down over here for a second then get my thermos here it's already full of hot water and this one you unscrew the cap a little bit and then there's little arrows there on the cap for where the water comes out and you'll go ahead and just pour out the water into the side where the bombisha is that water hole and then you'll see it kind of bubble up and that's it that's it brewing right there and uh, the person that does all this is called the matero um, m-a-t-e-r-o from the word mate the matero or the servador the server the matero mm. wow that's pretty good has a different flavor to it from what I what I expected but it's good it is a little bit smoky but not overwhelmingly I think Rosa Monte is the most smoky one that I've tried and the most ashy tasting one to me like cigarette ash almost was uh, Wind Horse. It's an American brand. Wind Horse Especial. I do not recommend that one if you ever come across it. Just my personal opinion. It's really strong, really smoky, ashy tasting. Not that great, in my opinion. So the Matero, you heard that slurping sound? The Matero takes the first couple drinks first few drinks might have some leaves come through the holes in the bombisha that's okay it's normal not gonna hurt you take two or three gourds worth 
I'd refill it and hand it over to one of their friends. Usually I'll sit in a circle or semi-circle, hand it, hand it over to the person on the left, and when they're done, they'll hand it back. If they don't want any more, they'll say thank you. That means they don't want any more, they're good. And then the matero will refill it again and keep going around until all the flavor is gone. Hmm, it's good stuff. Didn't realize this video was going to be over 20 minutes long, but I did kind of take my time um, in kind of trying to show you exactly what to do. Hopefully, I did it justice. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. You can find me on Facebook. The links to my Facebook are on my video um, channel page or Google Plus. Or you can leave me a comment in the notes section down below. Um, guess that'll do it. Keep spreading the love with or without Mati. Be kind to one another. Laters.